welcome to another episode of Playing Ultra Podcast. This is episode 146. 146 for the new year, 2019. Oh, yeah. yeah, first episode of 2019. Everything's so much better in the future. Yeah. So they tell us, where is my flying car? I was promised a flying car, and it's not here. I'm very disappointed. Four more episodes to 150. Nice. Yes. So yes, how was the New Year's? <laughs> I mean, not much happened. I feel like, oh, you know what I did for New Year's? What? Um, I convinced my partner to finally watch Young Justice because season three came out, uh, or at least parts of it have come out not too long ago. You can only get it through the DC streaming service, which my partner happens to have. Sexy. Yeah, it's really dumb. I honestly, I probably wouldn't have seen any of Young Justice if it weren't for the fact that someone had the DC streaming service. But anyway, DC streaming service actually, I mean, if you're really into the DC cartoon stuff, it's pretty cool because they've got everything. They've got, you know, Batman, Batman Beyond, um, Teen even Titans. The, even the old stuff. Yeah. Um, stuff that you can't really find very easily anymore. So it's worth it for that. Um, but anyway, um, my I partner never saw... subscribing it for like every month. Maybe yeah, a couple exactly. of months here and there. Yeah, 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 exactly. So... I, although I hear it's not doing well, <laughs> so I'm not sure how much longer they're going to survive. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's kind of too bad because I kind of enjoy having it, but like, yeah, no, not really. But how anyway, my brain's months. saying eight ninety nine, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It might be ten, but I, my brain's saying eight ninety nine for some reason. Um, but anyway, I'm, uh, for those who don't know, I am a huge fan of Young Justice. I watched it a long time ago, um, and uh, um, so, Before, so when cool. the <laughs> so got a little, kind of a little after um so when season three was like said to not be a thing of course i was one of the people who were sad and i was also simultaneously there when at first netflix was going to pick up season three <clears throat> and then um we're waiting and waiting and waiting felt like we were waiting for two years after that announcement and uh then after that finally um they said the dc streaming service and then it was finally going to come out uh i think it was like the week after um, New Year's, I want to say, which was now. I feel like it came out earlier, but anyway. So my New Year's was finishing up the binging <laughs> of Young Justice with my partner because she had never seen it before. Wait, they released so. all of it at one go? No, 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 no. Uh, They're releasing three episodes a week. So we saw the bad. first three. Yeah, it's not too bad. Oh. It's actually, I mean, I don't really mind that, um, to be honest with you. So um, to be honest, one of the reasons I, you one of the biggest reasons I actually kind of like the fact that it's not all of it at once, you get fewer spoilers. <laughs> mm. Um, So uh, just because it only, it's so, so it's three episodes a week. So, you know, you catch up with that and you're good to go. Um, So I've seen, I actually just finished watching the next three episodes that just came out before I came on here. Um, It's dark. Like, this show is never going to be on Cartoon Network ever again. I mean, if this DC streaming service doesn't work out, I don't know what they're going to do because there is no way a channel is going to pick this show up. I mean, it's not like crude adult humor, but it's not a kid show. It is dark. People really? die. And, like, they show how people die. It's... I'm not... Like, I'm not... It's not so like it's not one of gore. those, like, Batman drives through somebody with his tank and then like oh he's still alive no you see people get shot you uh i mean um not too much of a spoiler but there is a character who her thing is she's new she's a new character i mean part of the thing is she can come back to life it seems like but she has now gruesomely died three times (laughs) as a result she died once which was kind of yeah i'm sorry she's kenny (laughs) <laughs> exactly. She kind of died once, and like it's also kind of funny because uh, she like lost her memory, and so at first she couldn't speak uh, speak anything very well. Um, so that's also why it's kind of funny when you mention Kenny. But yeah, like the first thing you see her die the first time. I forget how she dies the first time, but because you don't know that she's important yet. Then she comes back to life. Then you see her get half her half her face burned off. So you think, oh, she's dead. Then she comes back to life. This and now I just said it. Yeah, and then what I just said this name. So, uh, for those who don't mind to be spoiled, um, she, so in the, in the show, she, this is Halo Girl, but she's different than the Halo Girl from the comics. Like, they've redone her. Because we didn't recognize who she was at first, so we had to look her up, and it's, she's not at all the way that, that they have it in the original portrayal. Very different. Um, still kind of has it, each color aura does a thing. Um, but it's, they've completely re- redone it. They're doing something completely new with this character. Maybe combining her with somebody else, but Halo Girl is what she's known as. Um, 
That's the superhero she's based off of. So yeah, and this is the last episode I just saw. Uh, someone just twisted her neck around. And so you see, and so yeah, she comes back to life, and you know she's going to, but you still are like, oh my lord, like <laughs> it's gruesome. Um, <clears throat> uh, and trying to remember everybody, they add a lot of new characters at you real fast. Um, so we we could hardly keep up. We're like, who was that person again? Mm. And some ra- a lot of random people, but overall, um, it's a lot and it's heavy. Um, but I kind of liked this this these three episodes just now better the first three episodes like go together they're like a three-part series so you can tell they wanted to make sure they can't they like went off with a bang because it's basically one two three all together you know self-contained like one storyline um not like a whole overarching just mean like it's took three episodes to explain this mission basically um and the next three were all kind of different um and it was kind of nice because there was some levity so it's interesting to see what some of the characters are doing it takes place two years after season two um, so it is, I, I am enjoying it now, but it is, it's a little different. Um, prepare for it to get a bit dark, um, and for ships to just fly out the window. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> this is no canon and this is no canon. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm trying to think if I've seen, if I saw anything else that was worthy. Oh, um, Shar, do you know that Steven Universe has been out? Yeah, I've been watching. Okay. I'm pretty much, yeah. I pretty much watched into the new episode, the new, new episode. Okay. We don't we don't have Cartoon Network, so unfortunately, I'm forced to watch it. I don't it. watch Cartoon Network. Yeah, I have to. I, some, I, I don't some... think I can get access here as well. I'm not sure though. Yeah, I have to watch through some lucky sap who um helps me watch it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> don't pirate kids. Uh, but um, yeah. What have, what have you thought about it so far? Uh. The endings are really annoying, as usual, I guess. Yeah, I know. They're so short. It's easier yeah, when you have to binge yeah. it, right? Yeah, it's so much easier. Ugh. It's a hard... Sh- it's an easy show to binge. I, it's a hard think, show to watch once a week. And I think... Uh, it's two weeks once now, I think. I'm sorry? Uh, once every two weeks? Each, once every two weeks, yeah. Each is that episode. what it is now? I think so, yeah. Oh, I, I, got, I gotta look it up again. I forget. I think the last episode I... came out like on the 7th, and the next one is gonna come off on like the 24th first or something they were coming on mondays i know because the first episode was actually before the new year i think but I it's think definitely f- a um but i'm gonna yeah. watch it one when it comes out but i'm gonna binge it again yeah because it's just yeah. something you need to binge. you kind of need to see it all the way like yeah. back to back to back to back yeah i because agree in the end, each 11 minute episode kind of feels like a semi episode I know, I know. Right. It sucks. That's why th- when they used to do the Steven bombs, it was a little easier because it was one a day for like a week. That was a um, little easier to digest, but this is one a week. It sucks. Although the last one of this particular like onslaught of it is supposed to be an hour long, I hear. The last one, yeah. Yeah, I don't... Hmm, is it okay. a movie? No, well, right? that's what people are wondering. We're like, is it the movie? Is it leading up to the movie? I'm very nervous of what... Because we're so used to 10-minute clips. Like, what yeah. is an hour length going to be like? Can they do it? Their pacing has worked so... An just going to be six, 11-minute episode put together, I think. Yeah. Hope they can do it. Maybe, I mean, I will laugh so hard if that's what it actually is. It's just six episodes in a row. that We will yeah. all have been trolled. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't care, but I, we will I, I all been severely that. trolled. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't mind that, but we have all been severely trolled. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh my lord! But yeah, we'll see. It's it's hard. It's too it's too early to judge. <laughs> yeah. So but yeah. What else did you do? I'm trying to think, if there's anything else crazy I did. Um, I helped finish and get the good ending of the um story mode of Smash Ultimate, so that was a mm-hmm. thing. I didn't know there were not- multiple endings. There are, I know, endings? lots of people don't know. Um, there are three endings, and if you don't get the best ending, you don't get New Game Plus. <laughs> That's really so weird. So New Game Plus for a is Smash game. playing the story again with any character you want? I'm not actually sure what it is, to be honest with you. I haven't tried it. Um, I just know that's the only way to get New Game Plus. So basically, for those who don't know, maybe I'll save you some frustration. Um, at the end part, uh, where you basically are fighting, basically it's the light versus the dark. I don't know what they're called. You have to, like, keep everything balanced and make sure you destroy both of them. If you destroy only one of them, the other one lives, and then you get 
their bad ending, basically, where they mm-hmm. take over the world. The whole storyline's supposed to be that, because I think the whole storyline of Smash Ultimate is that, like, your friends have gotten, like, taken over, and they're split into, like, the dark versus the light. There's actual names for them. I don't know the names. Who cares? Um, <laughs> And so you have to try to rescue them, but if you only, like, save this group, this group still is enslaved, basically. That's the whole thing. The ending's really weird and ambiguous, and I don't get it, but whatever. All I know is when I made sure we got the good ending, because <laughs> I happened to, I noticed, I was like, that's weird that they mention a certain thing when you're playing the game at the end, and so I looked it up and realized, oh, that's how you determine which ending you get. <laughs> So look it up, folks, <laughs> or else you're going to be very upset. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, nope, I've just been going back to work and I got a house, so I'm trying to figure all that. So hopefully this back room will be different someday. <laughs> That's about it, what though. What would you fool? Uh, the Young Justice thing reminded me. I'm reading a pretty good comic right now. It sounds really dumb, but it's actually really good. It's a Batman Judge Dread crossover. That's, ooh, and it works cool. really well because Judge Dredd <laughs> likes to kill everybody pretty much. Yes. And Batman doesn't like to kill anybody, so they're, they're allies, but they don't like each other's methods all the time. Hmm. So it's actually like, like the, a bunch uh, of different Predator traits. Crossover. That was really good. Which one? That one was good. Batman Predator. Ba- it's oh. funny because I also read the D. DC- There's a Superman Predator crossover, and it's terrible because it's Superman. So, what, what's the Predator? This is boring. Well, uh, there's. Some virus on the Predator ship that makes Superman Kryptonite. weak. Oh. No. It's just like a <laughs> cold. I just <laughs> remember. Like Superman got the flu. He basically gets space flu. And the Predator's right. like, here's a, here's a, here's the antidote. It's like, what antidote? Like, as far as you know, you don't even have any germs. There's like, it's just like regular air to you. Like, I don't understand why he has the antino- antidote for Superman's for oxygen. inability. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's really dumb. Yeah. Um, Because then it was followed up by the even worse Terminator Superman crossover. What were you going to say? I was just reminded, sorry, I just have to interject. I remembered one other thing I saw this weekend, and I I don't recommend it. We were told told by a friend that the movie All-Star Superman, which was based on an Alan Moore comic, was Hmm. really, Uh, really... Alan Moore is usually good. Yeah, this this comic is not, neither is the movie. Oh, no. (laughs) My brother... It's, I don't know how to describe this movie to you, because here's the premise. The premise is, it's basically like Superman's last days before he dies, and he does die at the you end. Like old age kind of thing? No. Oh. He basically gets like super sun Rare cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no other way to describe it. He basically gets super sun cancer. Um, there's no and other way it's to kill like, Superman. It's either space flu or super sun cancer. I know, but it's super sun cancer. Um, orchestrated by Lex Luthor, of course, because Lex Luthor's, like, super smart. And it's... Yes. So, apparently, Alan Moore, when he did this comic, he's like, I want to make everything about Superman canon. Which led to a lot of stupid things in this make, movie. There's a lot of contradictions, I bet. I mean, it's just... <sighs> I don't know how to describe this movie. So he starts off by saving this thing that this, this like project that was supposed to go to the sun that Lex Luthor, like from back on earth, you know, sabotaged. So he was too close to the sun. So he got super sun cancer. And so then the first thing he goes is he helps, he goes in and reveals his identity to Lois Lane and Lois Lane. Sorry. If you don't, if you want, if you don't want to be spoiled, please skip this section. I'm going to try to summarize this movie the best I can. He goes and sees uh, Lois Lane and it's her birthday. He reveals himself. She's like, what? You're Clark Kent? Okay, fine. Goes to, takes uh, her to his, uh, you know, Fortress of Solitude. Um, makes right. her f- accidentally think that he's going to, like, kill her and make, like, make something out of her skin or clone her or something like that. But, oh, well, sorry. She was just affected by some weird gas thing. It's totally <laughs> fine. Anyway, so he made her a super suit because he gave her a serum where she could be, like, Superman for 24 hours. So she's, like, Superman for 24 hours. They go flying around and doing stuff. And then they meet up with Atlas and... So, um, not, is it Atlas? These two random superheroes are time travelers, and they're flirting with her, and she's flirting with them back. Superman gets mad. They want to, like, have this big fight with them, and then something from the Sphinx comes, and because he comes from the future, because these time travelers knew that only Superman could defeat it at this time in his life, <laughs> so he defeats the Sphinx guy. 
because the answers are riddle correctly. And then they go, and then they dance in Atlantis, but that was just for five seconds. You don't see much else there. And then the serum, I think, wears off, so she goes back. And then, like, some people that were also from Kryptonium, Krypton, whatever, Krypton, come, and they try to, like, invade the Earth, but then he, you know, through some weird thing, they actually get really, really sick, so he makes them go away. What else happens? Uh, Lex Luthor does a thing... Oh, yeah, I think Lex Luthor's in jail at this point, and so he goes there as Clark Kent, but then he, like, helps bust him out or something, because there's a big <laughs> jailbreak. God, what else happens? There's a lot that happens in this movie, and it's really weird. Oh, yeah, and then, like, this this sun eat this this thing that's, like, working with Lex Luthor, but is gonna, like, make our son old or something comes in, so he defeats that, but then he goes to the sun and rebirths as our son, and that's how he dies. The end. I think I forgot some scenes. It was bad. I don't know how to describe it, but it was really bad. And I was told the comic was the same thing. So, um, take that as you will. It's, <laughs> it's not a. It's not new. It's 2011 movie, right? Yeah, it's and the animation's really the, no, not the animation. The uh, the art is hard to take in. Um. Superman's got some real pouty lips going on. He's got the like super squirt real pouty lips. Yeah, he's like he's like like you know the chin guy from Timmy Turner. He's like yes. that without the huge super large chin. Like there's that's... a weird moment in the Batman <laughs> Dread thing where Dread's in Mega or sorry Batman's in Mega City and he takes a different Dredge's motorcycle and motorcycle's like. Like, oh, voice recognition not working. Like, if you steal a judge's thing, that's a big crime. And so Batman's like, oh, man, I only heard the other judge speak for two seconds. I better impersonate him. And it's just like... <laughs> it's just drawn with these stupid lips. And apparently, who knew, Batman's superpower is perfect impersonations because it works. And he can drive the motorcycle. <laughs> this is dumb. <laughs> Wait, was it supposed to be serious? It's pretty serious. Okay. It's not, like, su- oh, it was not super serious because, like, um... Have you guys seen the original Dread movie, where the special Stallone? Mm. Long time There's a when he goes out into the waste, <clears throat> he meets this guy with like a dial on his head, and the dial has like four settings for his mood, and they're all like the same thing, like 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 maim, brutal, violence, like the same thing. Anyway, that guy's in the comic in the first issue, and his name's like um, Mean Machine, and he gets like a battering in the head, and it accidentally like, knocks his dial to like level four. He's like, oh no, I can't stop bonking! And just running around like bonking things constantly for like the rest of the fight. So that was pretty silly. So I say it's serious, <laughs> but I don't actually know, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, the evidence says the contrary. I feel like Batman's like they... pretty silly, and Judge Shred's actually pretty serious. Because it's really That's like kinda... metal. Like, because like, uh, the main bad guys are the four, what are they called? The dark judges, which are like um, these weird ghosts. Like, there's Judge Death, Judge Fire, Judge Mortis. Yeah, they're, and judge... they're like not human or something, right? They're, they're not really? human. Yeah. Not human. They look like um, like and metal album like... covers. Yeah. The, the crime is life, the sentence is death, that kind of stuff. Were they in the movie? People get dissolved. Um, in the new movie, there were four bad judges, but they were not supernatural at all. Um, I also so back to what I was doing. I watched a new anime. I'm two episodes in. It's called Violet Evergarden. It's a Netflix. Oh, I've anime. heard of it. I've heard of so that. Only, I heard again, it's only two episodes in, but I'm really liking it. I the heard it's pretty good. Is, yeah. So this girl wakes up in like a hospital, an army hospital, and she her arms have been replaced with like metal arms, like auto male arms. And it turns out that like from like I'm not sure how old she was because it's hard to tell in an anime character, but very very young. She was basically given to this army major and he basically turned her into like a living weapon and they fought Mm -hmm. like in world war one together basically and as far as we know the anime is very very clearly like he's dead but i mean maybe he's not i don't know but we're supposed to think that he's dead but she doesn't think he's dead like oh the major will come and get me because she's like he's like her whole life like it's a very dysfunctional relationship i guess i don't really know but what makes the anime cool is um so far it's kind of just about her trying to live like a normal life because her whole life has been like i am very good at killing people and it's like you're a postman now try and be good at being a postman mm. and then not be like a freak and so i don't know i find it really interesting um mm. but two episodes is a little early to judge so we'll see if it gets good or bad yeah i think i heard it was kind of i think i heard it was kind of sad but i heard it was good i, I never watched well, it though 
I'd believe it gets sad. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised, rather. Yeah, yeah. So are you reading it or watching it? I am watching it on Netflix. Mm, this came out last year. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's new. Random. It's relatively new. I do remember I heard about watch, it. Did uh, Bandersnatch, the new Black Mirror no. episode? No. The new I don't... The interactive Telltale yeah. big it's game, basically, super right? overhyped. It's like, have oh, you played okay. a Telltale game? It's like that, but worse. Oh. <laughs> the so, reason I why liked... it's hyped is because... Because <laughs> people think, haven't um, played video games. Yeah. So they don't know. This is the like, best oh they've ever God, had before. This is a thing? <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's why... It, yep. So that was Honestly, a little disappointing. If people, if people enjoy Bandersnatch, there are so many better ones out there. Absolutely. Yeah. In video game format. Like, there's nothing wrong with Bandersnatch. It's just... There's way better is things the, already. Is, is it's not. It's a little shit, late to the, the game. Shit, what, what shit about it? Uh, so it's, it's really funny because like the like because black it's Black Mirror it has to have some message, and so the mm. message is like, oh, the illusion of choice. It's like anybody who's played a video game, the illusion of choice has been painfully apparent. Fully in this game. studied and looked yeah, at that's like too like funny. So in, in a fair, Telltale not game. That, no, not to be fair, not everybody that plays video games understands that. It's sure. true. But Not so everybody in a does. Telltale <laughs> game, if you make a choice, it kind of like you know branches and then maybe comes back in and then yeah. continues in the way. That's the illusion there. <laughs> right. But like in Bandersnatch, the choice loops are so tight, like you can immediately see like it didn't matter or like how it would have forced oh, you back anyway. That's, like it's just so they so, so the 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 whole message is illusion of choice, which they don't implement there's well. There's no illusion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, because oh, you have yeah. to have illusion of choice in games just because it's impossible to make every single choice have yes. extremely good, you know, matters. The and, you know, with Telltale yeah. games, of choice is the illusion it's part. even harder exactly. in a movie, I, I guess. Yeah. yeah that, well, <laughs> that you, kind of thing. How do you interact with it? Just with a remote uh, or something? Yeah, you have the remote and you can make choices. So oh, okay. one interesting thing that it'll do is uh, you'll reach a choice and you'll choose an option and that will play the movie. And uh, sometimes it'll end like in a game over scenario and it'll kick you back to your last choice, and you can choose A or B uh, again. So you could choose you could choose A again, which I never tried. But sometimes you'll choose an option, and the story will progress, and it'll reach, I guess, some game over state. But it'll go back to the choice and automatically pick B, and B will play out having knowledge that you picked A first. Oh, so it'll play out a little some... differently, which is interesting. Okay. Okay, that's for, that's kind of cool. That's some that, zero that escape cool. stuff. Yeah, that's like some <laughs> zero escape kind of stuff, actually. <laughs> a lot of zero escape that. games had that. Well, it's, it's, it's that DS trilogy I'm in love with. Wait, they do a lot of that. The okay. Remember the choice kind of thing? It's, um well, the whole, I don't want to spoil too much of it if you ever play it. Um, that's, that's the one where it did start with 999. Um, mm-hmm. They're visual novel-esque games um, with escape puzzles, basically. Um, there was three. Um there it's just with that one like a lot of it has to do with uh if you play out through one ending the whole game is about the idea of like you've gone through this before you have seen these alternate routes mm. you you know what happens here so that's why you went to this path it it's this it's kind of that self it's a little bit self aware about that and the whole idea is the fact that you as playing as the characters are actually switching literally between timelines so that's why so that is pretty cool yeah. Uh, I also saw Spider Man. That was really good. Woo! In, oh, the Spider Verse one. Yeah, it was funny because yeah. one of my coworkers was complaining. He's like, "Man, they didn't have a scene where Spider Man was pointing at another Spider Man, and that would have been so funny." And like, you didn't wait after the yeah, credits, you didn't did, say you? Credits, did you? Because <laughs> that was the funniest part of the whole thing. Oh, it was so funny. I was, I was crying. dying. <laughs> I was dying. I was laughing so hard. It was so funny. It is honestly my favorite movie of 2018. It's so I feel the same movies. way, but I have to remember because like the it's also the, is the, because the most recent movie I saw, so I don't know. Yeah, just for, like, Deadpool yeah, 2 was good. Black, Black Panther like, yeah. other stuff. Out. Black Panther, Black Panther came out. That's right, Black Deadpool Panther came 2? out in 2018. Deadpool 2 came out too. There's a lot of good movies in 2018. Like I have but to no. go back and look at a list, but it Spider-Man's a, a strong movies, contender. Spider-Man is... I will put Spider-Man above Black Panther. Yeah, it's certainly possible. It's oh so yeah, Spider-Man I'm over Black a, Panther a for sure. Hmm. So good. And because well, I, think, I had a couple like, of problems with Black Panther. I've always complained about Spider-Man, and I think what made this one really good for me is it had grumpy old Spider-Man, who mm. who just who's like the opposite of everything I hate about Spider-Man. Everything I love is the grumpy, jaded, bitter old Spider-Man. And, oh, that was so. Who like divorced Mary Jane <laughs> and like lives by <laughs> himself. Yeah. I, re- oh I, my I really God. hope that's a uh, director's cut comes out for like whole media. 
that has I extra scenes or something. Extra scenes, yeah. Oh, that would oh, so be cool. So John Mulaney voices Spider Ham. Spider Pig. He was yes. on. Uh, he was on one of the talk shows saying that they kind of let him do a little bit of improv and ad libs and stuff. And so for some Ooh. reason, he spent like a whole day just swearing. And he's like, "What? What's this movie rated again?" And they're like, "Oh, PG 13 It's like, "Oh." We can't use any of that, can we? Like, yeah, probably not. <laughs> He's like, you should have stopped me. Like, but you look like you were having fun. <laughs> now I want to hear these reels. Come on. I want to hear it too. Oh, I want to hear it so bad. You... Can so animals so talk in this world? Because I don't want to freak him out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, kablam! When he drops like a, a, a an anvil on someone, like doing his own sound yeah. effects. Oh my oh, gosh. Yeah. I Nobody wish there was more a... of him. They photoshopped Kingpin from the Daredevil show into the shape of Kingpin from the cartoon. There's this big, you know, cube with like a face oh, just yeah. for the people to love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was pretty funny. That is really funny. Yeah. Otherwise, I think that's everything I've been doing. Um, I'm excited for new Warhammer miniatures, but that's not really relevant to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Wigs everywhere. Yeah. What about you, Char? What'd you do? Uh, finally finished Firefly and Serenity. That's a thing. Nice. It's so good. God damn. You're a leaf uh, on the wind. Yeah. Oh my god, I was so pissed off when they. <laughs> yeah. Wait, when did when did the movie come out? Like two thousand four, three. Early two thousands or something. Yeah. yeah. So. It's past the date of being able to spoil anything, right? I yeah. think so. I think I oh, have. There's, there's almost a tipping fire point fire where something mine? becomes old enough that nobody's seen it anymore, and you can yeah, spoil it again. I actually <laughs> don't no, think, I think I've seen fine. all Firefly, but I know enough. Like, so don't worry about it with me. <laughs> nah, I'm sure everybody knows which part I'm talking about. I've about that. forgotten so on. much. That uh, space fight is one of my favorite space fights of all time. When the Reaver fleet hits, like the. Right, right, whatever yeah, they're called yeah yeah it's like they're like shooting out like harpoons and like spinning real fast and crashing like oh man it's, it's so cool and the kind of shaky like camera you're like trying to pan around to like catch all the lasers like oh this is what i want i want like gritty like almost like blair witch style camera work for my space fights <laughs> <laughs> you forgot to mention this for battle chases night war I've been playing it. Did I was I not playing it when we on the last episode? I don't. No, I, I don't think don't so. Remember. I don't think so. I think I was. I think I'd started it. Uh, so I'm level 25 now. Have you finished the game? I think. Yeah, I finished. I it. Assume? 50 hours. How? Uh, what level were were you when you finished? I, I uh, need maximum to is 30. How... Oh wow. Okay. Max is 30. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So. Um, uh, so battle chases night war. It's a turn based JRPG. Uh, I mean, it's weird because it, it, I, I call it a JRPG because it's like the genre name, but it's it's American. It's not Japanese, so. Num- number one, that. But but I can't really think about any other RPGs that handles combat in the, you know, we line up one side, you line up the other side. and Exactly. Base. It's like, mostly that's, the RPGs that, is, that does that. That's what I think first. Yeah, exactly. So, so I think you just, you could, I mean, yeah. JRPG-esque. Turn-based RPG is what you should call it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But turn-based RPG in American sense, you think probably more of like Baldur's Gate and stuff like that. Yeah, you know those old school computer RPGs. Like, yeah, uh, that's almost more like a tactics game. They they're called yeah, computer know. RPGs. Yeah, but CRPGs. but they were ba- they were based off of like D and D. So they were yeah. like so because I'll, Bioware I'll used is... to take yeah. whole cloth, you know, like D and D systems. Kotar is Star Wars. Um, old it's older, yes. but it's the Star Wars Saga tabletop edition just kind of took from like, it. Uh, during the Christmas sales, I bought the uh, Mass Effect Two and Dragon Age Two DLC bundles. Nice. Those are good gonna bundles. Re- gonna re- I don't know about Dragon Age 2, but I know Mass Effect 2 is. <laughs> Dragon Age 2 is actually pretty good. It It's pretty solid. Be- uh, only reason a lot of people hated it is because Dragon Age Origins was really fucking good. And it's so different mm. from Dragon Age Origins. Yeah. It's very different. So, so uh, Battle Chases Night War. Dungeon crawling, JRPG, turn-based combat JRPG style kind of thing. Uh, I found the characters very one-dimensional and the dialogue kind of annoying and the voice acting not very good. <laughs> also, I mean, it's, it's okay. mixed voice it's acting. Fine. Like, I'd say about 50% of the type, the pseudo cutscenes are voice acted. It's kind of weird. I'm not sure mm-hmm. if they determined what to voice act and what not I to voice act. I actually changed it to Japanese. Do you have that option on GOG? I haven't checked. Yeah, so I changed it to Japanese and 
That's and you know, like really Japanese, funny. it. I'm not sure how to say this, but whenever it comes to Japanese voice acting, I'm never really like wowed by it, but I'm never really let down by it. It's kind of just like pretty consistent quality. Yeah. And it has that same consistent quality to it. I'm not sure it's because I don't speak the language. I have no idea. But uh, it's pretty good. I spent 50 hours on it grinding and like doing all the side quests and all the hunts. I pretty much did almost everything. The only things I didn't do is like get everybody's ultimate weapons. That's the only thing. I, I didn't did. know ultimate. You mean you mean you're talking about not level three bursts, but like ultimate weapons. Weapons, yeah, ultimate weapons. Oh, I didn't know the thing. So e- each character will have their own ultimate weapon. Oh, interesting. <sighs> and you have to have like those really rare stuff. Um, the uh, there's also new game plus. I tried it out for a bit, and it's pretty pointless. It's just the same. Because the so when you level up, when you reach like level five, you get perks. Every time you level up, you get two perks. So these perk points are like right. You can put in and activate like passives and stuff like that, right? More damage, more you know, more bleed damage, whatever. I feel like they do a reasonable job of letting you kind of customize each character's playstyle. Yeah, actually, I really like the perk system. But yeah. when I when I was reading what new game plus offered one of the biggest thing is you bring over your perk points. You lose everything else. You lose your money, you lose your weapons, you lose your levels, but you bring over perk points. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I can level up again until like level 30 or whatever. And yeah. Get more perk points. All nope. the perks. Nope. You don't get additional perk points? You don't get points? any more perk points. Oh, that's not the friggin' so, points. What is the friggin' point of New Game Plus then? Mm-mm. There's no point. So literally, there's no point. You just replay the game for no reason. There's not even like extra bosses or anything i'm pretty sure and mm. like Lame. and the only way to get perk points in the new game plus is to uh if all your characters have been leveled to max level 30 is to get those things to sell for those uh premium that the special coins to get those books the tombs pretty much yeah that's it. i've and... bought most of the tombs at least i bought all the tombs for the main three i'm sticking with for now mm. But overall, the game is good. I like the game. It's a really good game. Yeah, it's one I of like those the games flow that of doesn't combat really, a lot. Yeah, it's one of those games that doesn't really do one thing really good, but as a whole, it just feels like a pretty solid package. Like, some some aspects of it are, like, obtuse enough. It feels like an old RPG, where it's like, mm. to do this, it's such a convoluted series of steps. Like, take this from this side yeah. of the world and take it over here yeah. and do this with this thing. And it was like, oh, man, like... Sometimes I'm getting lucky, and sometimes I'm just like, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing that's why I just, complete that's why side I just quests. used to walkthroughs because I didn't want to miss anything. I haven't I mean, done I, that I didn't, yet. I don't. I mean, want I didn't to, play all the way through with walkthrough. It's mostly like, yeah. oh, I have this uh, quest item that I've been holding yeah. for like ten levels. What the fuck did I do with this? Because I have everyone's level three burst except for um, Amumans or the the whip guy, and the I know it's guy. like, oh, there's a there's like a, a ghost in the in the cursed lands or whatever, and I know there's like that chapel area where it's like a skull on like a thing, but I don't know how to interact with it. I don't know like, do I need to get the skull? Like, should I be able to get it now? Like, I don't I don't know when I can uh, do things and when I can't. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's okay. Also I don't the, use level uh, threes anyway that much. Also, the dungeons are randomly generated, which is okay. I, I thought at first it was like, oh, that's pretty cool. You get to go through different layouts every time when you grind. But they're pretty similar. But there's an annoying thing about it. So when you... So uh, what, what the one thing I really like about dungeon design... Oh, okay, that's one thing they do really well. I really like the dungeon designs. They... um. You you have this small little like side quest thingies in each dungeons, right? Yeah. Yeah, like so like characters in the dungeon that you won't find anywhere else kind of thing. Or you have yeah. to bring some item into the dungeon to interact with something else in the dungeon. Those those kind of things. So dungeon specific stuff. Sometimes that random generator shit won't generate those dungeon specific stuff and it gets really annoying. Yep. Like there was one quest where I had to fill a bottle of some sort with blood. And I have to fill it at a fountain of blood. <laughs> and the fountain of blood the first time i played it played that dungeon i had found like three or four fountain of bloods uh, the next two zero that I happened to, to me with one yeah. there was like this like a uh, wolf um 
like shopkeeper. He's like, you should kill my rival shopkeeper. Oh yeah, and yeah. There, he wasn't in the dungeon, so I killed him. <laughs> I got his bag. I so, assume because yeah. I assume the other shopkeeper would, would have told me to kill him, but it's like, oh, oh well, this is, this is pointless. Well, that's annoying. Uh, so yeah, the the random generated things they 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 didn't do so well with the things that need to be generated like every run. So that's kind of yeah. annoying. Yeah. But overall, it's pretty solid. I really recommend it if you're into JRPGs. Pretty solid game. So I got it on the Switch. I have a couple of Switch cons. Number one, the frame rate is pretty bad sometimes. It's pretty annoying. Mm. Like overall, it's just a turn-based thing and it's not like a hacker slash, so it's fine. But it's, you know, just a little bit annoying that, you know. But most I one thing I can't tell if it's good game design or if I should be shouldn't be annoyed by it. But I feel like my sense of my own personal power is very jagged, and maybe that's what it should be. But it's like I go to a new zone and I yeah. feel very underpowered and weak. And by the time I leave the zone, I just feel like overpowered. Like I kind of yeah, wish that... it was it was less jagged and more just kind of mm. smooth. I don't know how yeah. to describe it, but it's it's weird. Yeah, that's also one thing about the game. Basically, how your levels play a huge role. Yeah. Not just like in the stat increases, like your levels le- just legit determines how much damage you put out and take against uh, the enemy, pretty much. Yep. But it's a solid game. You're liking it. I am. Uh, also, so when I do dungeons again, I use the other party, like all the three people who aren't my main mm-hmm. party. Mm-hmm. And I actually like the wizard's moveset a lot. The really? problem is... He doesn't, like, the only way to get mana back with him is to use a level 2 burst. Unlike Alamon, whose moveset I love a lot as well, and he has that built-in, like, get mana back move, which is super strong. Yeah, the the character that I don't like the most is the girl. Red the, gun girl? the gun girl? Yeah, girl. she's the most worthless. Yeah. She just does crits a lot and stuff, but... She doesn't even do... It's like, for me, I've built out... Um, what's, the, what's the sword guy's name? Not Gaston. Like, Gerald uh, Gully. Garrison, he I built him crit like so he crits a lot for me. Yeah, he crits a lot. Super yeah. awesome. And, and then there are books where you can increase the bleed and like the bleeds can crit and crits that one sounded put on cool. Bleeds and shit that's pretty crazy. I don't think you can do both, but I was tempted to. But I, I have a lot of synergy with the crit because uh uh freaking a the the robot uh whatever his name is he is like a, he can give a party wide crit buff and then also Alamon I have him so whenever he crits it heals somebody for like a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah. Some pretty good synergy going on there, which I like a lot. Yeah, the game handles crits pretty good. And having two people who can res is super important, I'm finding. Because <laughs> hmm. Alamon and, and the robot can res. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I played that. Uh, I finished Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Mm-hmm. And oh, nice. And once I finished it, it's one of those like, oh, it's finished. Finally. <laughs> so I can move on to something else. <laughs> It's uh, okay, welcome a little bit. It's an okay game. It's the last game of the trilogy. It's I didn't know that. not the best game of the series. It's I, I prefer the second one. So like, uh, the 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 stealth co- I, it, the game just feels really rushed. Mm-hmm. Like the game was, it just felt like it was mm-hmm. rushly made. Uh, the second game had like really good pacing and the uh, the stealth sections where you take out goonies. At a specific area, felt better in the second game. Uh, these the uh, set pieces where you run through and then a bunch of explosions happening and everything's collapsing. That is also done really well in the second game. Mm-hmm. So the third game is just a step back on almost everything. Mm-hmm. I feel. Uh, but I didn't really regret my time playing until I played this other game. Oh. I started playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Oh. oh. I mean, then I was in, and I'm just thinking to myself. I regretted spending the thirty dollars and the thirty hours on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Just spent it on freaking <laughs> Assassin's Creed. That's God damn it! Yeah, Assassin's I actually don't think I've heard good. anything about Odyssey. Yeah, because I've it, heard... came out the... it came out at the same time with Red Dead Redemption Two. It came, yeah, it was oh. a quiet release. I heard it was pretty good. I mean, That's the main thing about good. it, you can romance people, if, but like if you're if you like Origins, Odyssey is better. Yeah, I heard it was like a, a yeah. Game. I haven't played it, but I heard like so, yeah, there's obviously anyway. I chose to play as Cassandra, the female warrior. Because... Yeah, well, she's better from what I've oh heard. Oh my god, <laughs> she is fucking badass. Yeah, and she's so I hear, huge. Yeah. 
I heard I heard that like obviously they not, can't not say like who's like, canon, but like she's I like know. bigger and taller Massive. than everybody else. Yeah. Even, I even heard like guys, she's kind of crazy. Yeah, I heard she's kinda of like the main character this time around instead of the... Honestly, she feels just she just feels right in the world. Like she just feels mm-hmm. right. I, yeah. I can't I mean I, they they probably wrote it in a very gender neutral way. But I can't see myself not playing as Cassandra. Yeah. And she That's yeah. Cool. I romance. I'm trying to romance a couple of girls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I heard that. Yeah. But it's uh. So the the romance part, it's not a. I I'm not sure because I'm only ten hours in, but, like I did the sex, but I it's did not the a, sex. But it's not like a, oh let's have a relationship and like you know be together like Mass Effect two kind of thing. No, from what I I've heard, so. it's it's more almost more like wasn't The Witcher kind of like. Oh no, The Witcher! You have to choose between the two. Oh, you have to choose. Oh, okay. I didn't okay, realize so, okay. That. The Witcher three, at least, you have to choose between the two main ones, oh. and then you can have your side quests. I think Witcher two is different, uh, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, I never played. I just from what I've heard. But yeah, no, from what I've heard, the romances are not. They're just kind of like do yeah. the mission for them. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna try to fuck everyone. Pretty much, yeah. You can. Which hey, can also fail quests, which is interesting. Oh, First wow. time in Assassin's Creed history, I think you can fail quests because. Uh, oh, interesting. Okay, so like the ship battles are back. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't really in Origins. It was right. just a f- uh, in a few parts in Origins. Uh, it's it's solid. It's good. It's fun. But I'm kind of sick of it. Because it's so much of it in the Black Flag and like a couple more. Yeah. Assassin's Creed, I'm like I'm, I'm done with it. Like can we not yeah. do this again? Um, but yeah, but so you can. There's a bunch of stuff you can upgrade for the ship. You can also recruit lieutenants now that increases your passive stuff on the ship. But also, uh, when you hijack a ship, they will come and fight with you. And there's also like a skill where you can, like, if you're on the ground on land, you can call the lieutenants to, like, come and fight for you, like, 30 seconds kind of thing. So the quests that you can fail are those lieutenant quests. So you can fail in recruiting the lieutenants. But you Got also, it. but you just keep, you will just get the rewards as in, like, the experience points and the goal or whatever. But the failing part is just failing to recruit lieutenants. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's a it's a really good game. I like it a lot. Uh, yeah. Just the one thing that I'm really annoyed by is they have this. I'm not sure what they're going with this. Uh, they have like a mercenary mechanic. So you're pretty much a mercenary, and there are other mercenaries in the world, and those mercenaries will hunt people, mostly you. They will hunt you down when your bounty is really high. Uh, so you get bounty by stealing, by murdering people, murdering civilians, murdering Spartans and Athenians, those kind of things. But um, it's annoying because they make me they make it very hard to roam the world. So like I had this main quest that I was going through. Uh, and at the end of that, that particular quest, I had to fight a couple of guards that the the guy like the uh, us to attack me and two mercenaries was in the area and i had to t- fight the two guards and the two mercenaries <laughs> and one of the mercenaries was like two levels higher than me mm-hmm. and assassin's creed odyssey like origins is one of those games where two levels is huge like it's huge difference mm. like one level is quite tough but two levels is really tough it's one of those like hit and run kind of tactics you have to apply. Mm, so that fun. gets really annoying. Yeah. And the and the shitty part is the mercenaries, they have their own levels, right? They don't necessarily roam around those levels only. So each so in the world map, they have like different like a uh, states kind of thing, like provinces and stuff, and each province will have like a recommended level for you to not get fucked up to go in a level 35 level as a level 10 kind of thing yeah but the level 35 map area is next to the level 10 area and the mercenaries <laughs> will walk through the fucking thing and i'm uh. like i ran for my life so many times already <laughs> it's i mean it's like if you think about it it's like you know kind of like nah, it's not so bad but it, it gets annoying when you're trying to do something when mm-hmm. you just want to get to a place and this guy is hunting me down like a rabid dog so yeah I mean, it's that's probably the biggest con I have. It'll probably get better because I'm only like level fifteen now or fourteen. But it's a solid game. I love cool. it. 
it's probably up there with for me with Black Flag as the best Assassin's Creed. <laughs> I heard a lot of good things about, it, but yeah, it had a very like quiet release. Yeah, it's it was a bad time to release any games at the end of last year. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So yeah, uh, and you get to play as Cassandra. She is so fucking badass. Yes, that's what I've heard. <laughs> uh, so Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I also play Mario Odyssey. So many Odysseys. Nice. Um, I finished Mario Odyssey. Not really finish because there's like a bunch of end game stuff, but I, I just kind of decided to stop for a while because I wanted to play something else. But it's so good, my god! It <laughs> just has like that exploration, fun feeling. They they just get that yeah. down so well, and it's not as repetitive as like because I love Sunshine a lot, but I felt like they used the same level, like the same mission types on the different levels, and it wasn't different enough all the time. Mm. But Odyssey was I've heard like that. I don't know. Very, yeah, I've heard, I've heard people comparing Sunshine and Odyssey, and they, a lot of them prefer Odyssey in terms of level design. Yeah, yeah. levels are so good. I feel really rewarded for exploring, basically. And the uh, traversal yeah. is really cool. The The way to the way to move around the world is just really cool. Mm. With the different moves you can do. I, I watched a couple of videos of the like, speedrunners and stuff. I'm like, holy shit, I'm going to break my hand trying to do all this shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah that's that. some pretty crazy stuff yeah so yeah uh that's pretty much my couple weeks for new year's stay don't play games while everybody is out getting drunk and getting really exhausted Thank yeah you. i think you had the better idea let's be yeah. honest <laughs> i stayed in <laughs> i i did that when i'm 21 and even then i was murdered i'm not doing that i'm 30 years old sorry <laughs> fair enough died. yeah Oh, uh, so before we move on to news, there is a new game that just got released on Steam that I really recommend people play. Catherine. Oh, right. Uh, so Catherine is going to get like a remake. Oh, so, okay. okay. So, it so is Catherine, that game, yeah. So Catherine yeah. is the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 game where you get to choose between two girls and then the gameplay is really difficult puzzle. Platform. really hard like, block puzzle really difficult yeah. it's really good but it's one of those games that made me swear a lot <laughs> it is up there for me with one of the toughest quests in like grand theft auto where i had to fly that stupid remote control plane to murder those people uh, people will know probably what i'm talking about but catherine so the one on steam is catherine classic so it's not a remake version so, but the remake version is Catherine Full Body or something, which comes with like a extra girl and stuff and oh. a bunch of more content. So I'm not it sure if they're going to release it for content. PC or not. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so the Catherine Full Body, which is a remake, is going to have extra content and that's going to come out for the PlayStation 4, the Vita. Interesting. Okay. But Catherine Classic is on Steam and I'm not sure why. And I'm, I'm not sure if Full Body is going to come <laughs> out on Steam. But it's a really good game. I think it's 20 bucks. I'm not doubly sure. But 20 bucks. If it's 20 bucks, it's a really good price. It's. Yeah, I know the puzzles are really hard. hard. Oh, it's very <laughs> yeah. hard. Yikes. It's very hard. You played it, Sarah. I, I haven't played it myself, um, but I have seen it played. You, you probably should play with your partner and stream it or something. <laughs> oh, boy. I it's don't know if I want to know the choice. Ones. Yeah, I know. I'm not sure if I would like the. It's, it's I, yeah, actually, actually, that would not be a bad. I should get it. Actually, it's, it's that wouldn't be a bad <laughs> choice. Actually, rage and not fake rage for views. Like you will actually yeah. fucking rage. No, it's like freaking. You know, like um, you do. Yeah, exactly. Well, not me. I'm not gonna play it. Yeah. <laughs> she's gonna play it. Um, no, I was actually more joking. Like I don't want to know the choices she's gonna make in some of those things. Mm. Mm. Oh well, that's, that's how okay. you found out they were a monster. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But it's a super uh. solid game. And uh, yeah, hopefully the part is solid. I'm not... The reviews have been very positive, so... Cool. Yeah. So on to some news. On to some news. news. So, uh, oh, currently... What is that game? What... Uh, Edith Finch? Yes, that is a game. It is a game. What Remains of Edith Finch is currently free on Epic Game Store. Oh, boy. <sighs> yeah. Of course it is. I Not think I got it off Steam it. just recently. <laughs> if you haven't yeah, played I just... it, go get it for free and play it. It's really good. 
but it's a yeah. walking simulator if, if you're into that. Yeah, yeah. It's super good. Uh, so yeah, that's a thing currently you can get for free for within these two weeks ish. Uh, next one is let's start with a really weird one, shall we? Okay. Yeah. Anybody here know Soldier Boy? Yes. Um, I've heard. The I know name. exactly where you're gonna go with this, and yes. Oh, yeah. So Soldier Boy oh. is a rapper. He's a rapper. He's an American okay. rapper. American yeah. rapper. Soldier Boy. Guess. The sol- yeah, so- you know the soldier boy dance? The- you Ooh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that, that, that's a who? Yeah. Uh, something, Superman, something oh, Superman? Yeah. yeah. Superman, I don't that, know. Oh, that's, that's all I know is yeah. you. <laughs> Literally, it was like a high school, like the high school, mm, like yeah. height of dance music. Anyway. So, yeah. uh, so um, that's my least So musical. he's one of those rappers, right? The ones where you yep. can't really hear what they're saying and it's <laughs> yep. bass. Yep. So there's another kind? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. He released a game console. Yes, he did. Two, I think. What? Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Just keep going. There is a lot more to this story. Just keep going. And this is why Soldier Boy is on this game, gaming (laughs) podcast, because he released console. Okay, so. He did. So what he actually did was not release. Emulators on a pie. (laughs) So what he did was he bought already made consoles from like China. It's like a Chinese knockoff. Yep. So there are two types. One is the Soldier Boy Mini, Retro Soldier Boy Mini that hooks up to your TV. And the other one is the Soldier Game Handheld. He marks up the price for like 50 to 100% or something like that. And it's pretty much Brilliant. emulators that plays Nintendo games. And it also comes with ROMs because it's from China. Oh, yeah. Yep. And he tweeted out. Uh, <laughs> for anyone that thinks this is Soldier Boy, he tweeted on yeah, his yeah, official yeah. Twitter page. For anyone yeah. that thinks Nintendo is going he to sue me, for any for anyone that thinks Nintendo is going to sue me, you're retarded. Nothing is going to happen. Everything is legit. My console isn't going anywhere. Trust me. Cut to within a few minutes. And then uh, and he got sued. <laughs> and, he, and he pretty much can't. He basically, he I, I don't think he, he got stopped sued, selling, he can't sell it anymore. but Nintendo basically sent a don't you, don't you effing dare, like, <laughs> sent a cease and desist, I think, <laughs> you yeah. dummy. He's, so, this is not his first weird thing into video games. Um, oh. That is definitely the full story with that. Uh, you go to his website, if you go to his website for it, by the way, it's great. I don't know if it's still, it's obviously won't show this, but, like, I think, don't quote me on this, but originally, the prices were supposed to be for the Soldier game, was like, which was the handheld, um, which everyone was making fun of, like, why don't you call it the Soldier Boy? Like, the Game Boy, anyway. Yeah. Um, but if you, uh, but I think he was gonna price it, like, at $200, but you could yeah, get it as cheap. a deal for ninety nine ninety nine or something. Yeah. But, like, if they made it seem the like sales. you had a deal for it, but it was, but like, the only price. From, if you just buy from AliExpress, even on non, like, you know, you, if you buy bulk, you get it cheaper, right? On those kind of websites. Yep. But if you don't yep, buy yep, bulk, yep. you can get it for, like, 50 bucks or something. Yeah, Jeez. oh, yeah, oh, yeah. He's just anyway so but yeah this isn't his first like weirdness in gaming so uh he's also but he also tweeted some time ago that he wanted to make he wanted to get into esports um and make yes he old. wants to make an esports organ and he's not gonna play he just wants to oh, own like an yeah, east he, well I not see. just a team he wants it's i don't think he quite understands how it works because he just he wants lead. to he, he wants to make an organization he's like yeah we're to gonna have fair. uh we're gonna have a League of Legends. We're gonna have Overwatch. I, I, I follow video game news. I have. We have a video game. I. I don't even know how esports works. To be honest. I'm starting to learn. Trust me, it's my job now. <laughs> so, but 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 there are organizations that have multiple esports teams that play different games, right? As far as I understand it, yes. Um, but it's it's little. It, I don't quite, quite completely understand it. Each the problem is that each league, like each game, kind of has their own like dealio how that works, you know. Yeah, so like you have to deal with different companies. Yeah, so it's a little. So that's the thing is, I think it kind of depends. So that's why when he just said like, "We're gonna make a CS:GO team. We're gonna make a Counter Strike. That's Counter Strike. We're gonna make a Counter Strike team. We're gonna make a, you know, League of Legends. We're gonna make an Overwatch. I don't know why I sound like Barack Obama. That's okay. I, I don't think he sounds like that. <laughs> He does it at all. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, he's just whatever. So there's that. He's My less other favorite Yeah, exactly. My other favorite thing that Soldier Boy uh came out and did. So you guys know how Fortnite has been getting sued by um mm, the dancers. Dancing, ones, yeah. dancing and stuff like that. Soldier Boy has come out and would like, you know, his Soldier Boy dance to be in a Fortnite game. 
hasn't happened Trying yet. To be relevant. It, That's interesting. Exactly. Exactly. I would, think, I would think it was in it because it was pretty popular for quite it a while. It was pretty popular, actually, yeah, but yeah, actually, they haven't. Given how deep they've been diving, I'm surprised it's not yeah, already I'm in there. I am surprised, actually, actually but they haven't yet. In it. There was a. I think there's like some onion and he's article. He's one of the people suing. The Fresh he's Prince Carlton guy. Yeah, Carlton. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He kind of was one of the first ones, I thought. But yes, he is suing. He was the second one. The first he's the second. One, the first one was. Uh, was it Chance remember. the Rapper? I don't, I don't know how so. this works, but it doesn't seem like any of these are going to work. Chance the Rapper, Soldier Boy, all this stuff. Well, the reason they have a case... Are you talking about why they have a, whether they have a yeah, case? Yeah. The reason they do have a case, here's why. You have to pay to unlock those dances. Hmm. But who owns a dance? Well, that's the other thing is an IP over uh, dances, so, which isn't so super... So there have been a lot of videos by actual IP lawyers and stuff. Yeah. Because everybody has a YouTube channel nowadays. Yes. Oh, obviously. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So they have explained that they kind of do have a case. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Cool. I um, mean, it makes I, sense. I just didn't. Honest, honest, I don't. I yeah. don't think Carlton, unless he ad libbed the dance, like the choreographer should own the dance, right? Yeah. So that honestly, one's a weird. He's a weird one, admittedly. Yeah. <laughs> because I can't really see myself supporting a company that just made three billion dollars with Fortnite. Yes, three billion dollars. By the way, that's in revenue. Yeah. Billion. Wait. 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 That's not revenue. That's right. Re- that's it's it's um sorry. It's when you it's take profit. out all th- gross. So that's what it's I meant. Profit. Sorry, it's, it's profit. Excuse me. Profit. It's, that's what I meant. I said the wrong thing. It's profit. Not gross. They gotcha. made three billion dollars. They made I'm three not sure billion if it's dollars. Just Fortnite or it's insane. I mean, anything else it's is Fortnite. inconsequential. <laughs> Oh, it's no, just wait, Fortnite. Don't they also Fortnite is like ninety percent of that shit. They do, oh, yeah, but they do Fortnite's their. But Fortnite is the one that's been. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's made three Absolutely. billion dollars. Yeah, I know because I had to say that no piece doubt. of news three times this past two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so three billion dollars is the whole company, right? I'm no. I'm pretty sure it's Fortnite. Jesus. I'm pretty sure it's Fortnite. <laughs> I need to look. I feel like I need to look it up. <laughs> I know. That's I just say this like. Skins. Yeah. I know. Is, is that I don't all know the you profit margin stuff? on a skin is. Like, how much does it t- mm. cost to make a skin? Like, one full-time dev a week? Like, I don't know. I know a lot of people want to talk about how difficult it is to make a lot of this cosmetic okay. stuff, which it is. But we're talking about Epic Games here. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's 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 total with Epic Games. It's just that Fortnite okay, right. was the bulk of it. I so. mean, it's still, I'm sure, yeah. It's still crazy amount of money, though. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, three billion dollars in profit. I I said the wrong thing. I meant to say profit. I said revenue accidentally. But yes. Yeah, I know exactly. And the crazy <laughs> thing is, they released on Android, but they totally skipped Google's Play Store, which is insane. Whoa. Whoa. Is ins- yeah, they got fifteen Oops. million people. Jesus. What percentage of their gamers are on mobile? I wonder. Fifteen. Oh. Uh, probably, probably quite a few. If we know the total good. amount, I can give you a percentage real quick, but they're not saying I know. Anything. So, yeah, there's a reason why they can give away all these free games and pay all these developers for like, exclusives <laughs> on the Epic Game Store. Jesus. Yeah. My favorite, um, although the thing I just found out recently about um, Epic Games, they received, and this is just kind of, there's nothing really like special about this. It's just kind of a scale that we have. The United States, we have something called the Better Business Bureau, which is mm. basically just uh, an organization that rates businesses on a myriad of things. Um, there's but I nothing. It's I... not really very. It's can be uh, inconsistent. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's uh... anyone can put something on it. I think so. I, I don't know the full details, but the main thing is it's more of just a marker. It's more of a rating. It's not, it's like seeing a movie rating. It's nothing, you know, it's not going to yeah, make yeah. it, you know what I mean? So anyway, but Epic Games just recently got an F, which is the lowest score. And ah. the reason they did, and here's, but here's what's kind of crazy that I'm like, Better Business Bureau, what are you talking about? They, apparent from what I read, the only reason they got an F was because they had over, they had like 247 unanswered Com- customer complaints and i had to go listen that's a lot of customer complaints but this is fortnite we're talking about here they probably get 247 a day yeah <laughs> like what so but that was apparently why which to me that is as a crazy bar <laughs> for the better business Just bureau to, uh, answer your question for they have a total of 200 million players in fortnite okay thanks so 15 of that is android Dang. Um, it's only that's a small yeah, bit, but it's a bit. Yeah, chasers. Yeah, Fortnite's yeah. become a behemoth. 
Yeah. I haven't even played it. <laughs> poor PUBG. Yeah, poor PUBG, I know. <laughs> PUBG's poor a little Rust. behind. Poor Arm. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not free. <laughs> it's not kid-friendly. That's the big difference. No dancing. Yeah, no dancing. Oh my gosh, oh, they, the kids... They also recently released, like a couple months ago, or a month ago, a, a Fortnite creative where you can build your own levels. Yes. And you oh, can yeah, which is really... I was getting ads for that somehow. I can see that happening. I saw that on like PC and stuff. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then I turned yeah, yeah, on my yeah. fucking Switch and it's also on there. I'm like, how the fuck is the Switch going to handle that? That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. It's pretty I yeah. to try it and find out. I mean, Minecraft was on the Xbox. That was the first time I played Minecraft. It was a horrible experience, but it worked. <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably going to be something like that. I have, yeah. be, I have to be honest. That Fortnite Creative Tip actually made me think about signing up. Yeah, I would do it for that. I yeah. don't think I want to play, but I would do yeah, it for that. Yeah, just build stuff, yeah. Yeah, it's an easy building mechanic. Build stuff and then not have anybody visit because... Oh, because you don't. You want your sor- your your uh, fortress of solitude. Yeah. I almost said sorceress of solitude, which doesn't make any sense. Although sorceress of fortitude sounds something. Sounds like something. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So you you gonna say something? I was and I forgot. Yeah, like, Sorry. Probably not important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. Okay. Some of that. So Soldier Boy is trying to make a thing in video game thing. And... He's trying to be in, he's trying to be relevant in video games. It's fine. This, let's talk about this other console thing. Okay, so um, Slightly Mad Studios. Slightly Mad Studios are people who make video games. And they have made... Come on, Google, don't hang on me now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go Slightly Mad. Uh, do, 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 do. Loading, loading, loading. They're, in, they're headquartered in London, England. They have released Need for Speed Shift. Uh, Shift 2, Test Drive, Project Cars. So basically all the racing games. Project Cars 2 as well as okay. VRs. Slightly Mad Studio CEO reveals details on a new console. Uh-oh. Yay, more consoles. I just, just want consoles. Little... I don't want video games. It's just going to be consoles that can sit around oh and fall. You're going to eat your words after you hear what the CEO has to say. <laughs> it's going to be the most powerful console ever built. Oh, that sounds pretty <laughs> powerful. <laughs> To be fair, oh, you can literally just you can just literally take the most powerful console right now, put an extra stick of RAM in it. And technically, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> technically it would be true. I know. <laughs> I think the most powerful console right now is the Xbox power. One X, I believe. Hmm. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, I, I forgot so, yeah. it even existed. I, I think that's a more powerful <clears throat> console than the PS4. What if Pro. most powerful just meant it drew the most power? Like from yeah. the wall. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> so, yeah, Slightly Mess Studios is developing a standalone console that will support VR, CEO Ian Bell revealed on Wednesday, not this Wednesday, on the January 2nd Wednesday. The Twitter uh, account of Ian past. Bell, CEO of Slightly Mess Studios, cryptically tweeted, The Mad Box is coming. Oh, that's a pretty cool name. No, it's not. The Mad it Box. It is. Yes. Around three years' time, it will take, and it will be a console as is the Xbox or PlayStation. It will support most major VR headsets. You know what consoles are. <laughs> and the specs will be equivalent to a very fast PC two years from now. But it'll be coming out right. three years from now, so it'll be not as good <laughs> yeah. as It's going to be a one-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? I didn't think this through. <laughs> <laughs> Math is hard. <laughs> we found their secret. <laughs> yeah. We're just going to wait uh, two years, buy a PC, and sell it a year from now. <laughs> Uh, so no. yeah, what is the mad box? Bell wrote, "It's the most powerful console ever built. It's literally mad. You want 4K? You want VR? Literally, at yeah. You want VR at 60 <laughs> FPS? You want a full engine for free to develop your games on it? You have it. And then somebody you. said, uh, 60 frames per second. Shouldn't it be 90 frames per second for VR?'" <laughs> <laughs> and then Bell replied, "It's 60 frames per second per eye. What the fuck does that add? I don't know. What?" <laughs> That doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay, so then they clarify it with uh, Variety, Variety.com, that uh, he meant will be a total of 120 FPS. No, it's 60 per eye. <laughs> it's just 60 FPS. Never mind. Yeah, because that's how you add up. Is that eyes. how you add those up? You oh add, my god. That's how you add your eyes. Your human eye, like, stops noticing so, extra okay. frames at a certain yeah. point. I am always open for competition. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but I have I honestly do not I can't see how a new console can break into the market at this yeah. point. I mean, honestly, <sighs> and it'll happen eventually. By I mean, the only, <laughs> it's either you put in a bunch of money, buy a bunch of exclusives, and yeah. make it into the next Sony, Xbox, Nintendo kind of thing, or you create a pre-built, easy to carry around PC box that runs. Yeah, Windows I mean, Linux. you have to get the exclusives are what usually sell the system. I mean, that's pretty much how it's those consoles consumers, that we. That's, I I mean, it's how the consoles that we have have been able to remain where they're at is through exclusives. I mean, that's it. Why do you think I don't want Xbox One and I don't want a PlayStation 4? Right. I mean, it's your exclusive. It's what sells there. I don't like exclusives, but they work. (laughs) But they work from a selling perspective. So that's what they... I mean, they basically have to... So they either have to get an ex... Do they... I I get that exclusives work, but we don't actually have a choice now, do we? Do we? No, we don't. We... But don't but like so. but they need to have something games that will be willing to go there that we can't just get in a PS. Like why do I need to buy a new console, right? Mm. If they're gonna have the games that I can just get on my you know PS4 or Switch, why would or I buy PC. it? You know. So what's right? So what are they gonna do that's different? So they either need to get yeah. to an exclusive market or they kind of have to go Nintendo's route, which is basically do something freaking weird and new, which is kind of how Nintendo, when Nintendo has their exclusives too, they get the best of both worlds. They get the weird new stuff and they have crazy exclusives. Yeah. So like they got to yeah. do one or the other. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen. I'm just rolling my eyes because of this 120 FPS thing. <laughs> when, I, when I look at my console games, when what I see is mostly exclusives. Yeah. Most of the non-exclusive stuff I just buy on PC. Right. Yeah. You just get it on PC, right? I mean, if you don't have a PC, a PS4 or a Switch will just do you good, but... Right, you know. I I'm interested to see where. I mean, see what happens. Go, but I'm just rolling my eyes at yeah. 120 FPS <laughs> in a two year old computer. <laughs> Honestly, he sounds like a disc. Uh, okay, so what's that guy's name? The one that hypes up the Microsoft conventions? That's now the owner of the oh. Los Angeles Clippers. I thought you said the goddess guy. Uh no no no, I... you you know who I'm talking about, right? That big ball guy that just gets really sweaty during Microsoft conferences. I forgot his name. I don't think okay. I know. LA Clippers owner. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it was going to say, Steve, though. Steve Ballmer. Oh, okay. Oh. That didn't sound familiar. So, yeah, during Microsoft conferences, he, like, you know, he hypes people up and, like, he just go crazy and he sweats a lot through his shirt. Yeah, this guy sounds like a discount Steve Ballmer. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey. Yeah. We'll he see what looks, happens. He also, he's also white, white and bald as I made a comparison, to be honest. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Well, we'll uh, see what happens. Good luck to them. More the competition's good. Yeah, competition's good. Yeah. That'll be interesting. So, yeah. yes, uh, moving on. So, uh, one thing I was going to say, I, th- I can't uh, yeah. something about the, um, uh, I can't remember what game it was. It's a Kickstarter game, and they had made a Linux version because their uh, backers had asked for it. They were very vocal in the forums. Oh, they made a Linux version. Hmm. The Linux version, uh, I can't remember how long the game was live. Before these numbers were, were calculated, but so the, so the, the Linux sales represented, I think, 0.1 percent of the total revenue, but mm-hmm. accounted for like 20 percent of their automatically generated tickets from crashes and yeah. and incompatibilities and stuff. And so the consensus from that person was, it's not worth it to develop your game for Linux, which seems fair conclusion from that data. Yeah, dude, if you have a Linux, you probably will find a way to get the game anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> just saying. Um, if you're if you're on a Mac, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Didn't Steam like recently mention Okay, so the game that you're talking about is Planetary Annihilation. Yes. Oh okay. wow, that, that game. game. Wow, that so, game. Uh, That's a long, Linux users long time were a ago. big vocal part of the Kickstarter and forums in the end they accounted for zero point one percent of sales, but on more than twenty percent of auto reported crashes and spot tickets, mostly graphic card driver related. Would totally skip Linux, is what he said. Can't blame mm-hmm. him, honestly. Can't blame him, mm-hmm. absolutely. And, um, I'm just gonna ask, do people actually That's get it. Linux to play video games? Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, but people who have Linux want to play video games. Yeah, I was but, gonna say, they usually uh, want to play. Don't a lot play, of those but... people run Wine anyways? Uh, maybe. No I idea. Know. I only know one guy that has a Linux, and he basically got a Linux because he crashed his Mac twice. So he just downloaded Linux so he could learn how to use it. He doesn't play Hopefully many. He plays games on a different computer. Max. I was like, he shouldn't be trusted with Linux. 
No, he, I'm yeah. sorry, not correct. Like, yeah, he accidentally deleted the OS from his Mac twice, which is really hard to do, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's not He's impressive. Uh, He's an impressive man. It, gets, it runs okay. Linux? Uh, Max. Oh, yeah, it runs, Max. Oh, Max. Oh, yeah, I mean, Max run fine. I just don't like the, oh, I just don't like their system, that's all. Yes. The they, they are just fine. Absolutely ridiculous. They're fine, but they're overpriced, and I don't like the way their system works. I use that's Windows all. because it works with everything. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So uh, the thing I was talking about uh, is Steam Valve announced a new version of Steam Play, right? Last year, that will improve Steam integration of Wine. Mm. Hmm. Has so that come out yet? Has that happened? Something. I don't actually know. But they're basically just trying to make everything work better with Wine, I think. But when Noble. whenever like a uh, gaming news about Linux comes up, the one thing I I read that's pretty much consensus a lot of problems are because of shitty drivers by the manufacturers <laughs> nvidia and amd yeah um also plausible yeah so next piece of news not really <laughs> kind of news i guess so anyways uh pe- people are getting banned for using mods in fallout 76 yeah oh, yeah that that's not the funny part that. that's not the funny <laughs> part the funny part is they are offering to unban your account. It is up to the discretion of the management team to review. But the thing you have to do is to write an essay on why third-party software is detrimental to online communities. Mm. It's, it's particularly funny. It's, it's particularly so funny. funny coming from that company. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty funny. Oh God, that's really funny. <laughs> oh, they're that's petty. Why, I, think and I that's love why they it. Said det- detrimental to online communities and it's uh, fair uh, enough online uh, communities online, i guess right. oh we're not Still. talking about mods for our amazing single player games we're talking online yeah. uh, God. So they're dumb. so petty and i love it <laughs> and it's really funny that people are getting banned for mods by bethesda <laughs> of all companies yeah, yeah. yeah they get, i mean obviously they get there are mods that cheat and those are bad but there that's, are that's... mods that aren't that <laughs> they are not bad yeah to be fair i think it's mainly they don't want to be responsible if something breaks and it's online, so it could break bad. So I think that's really the concern, but I get it. <laughs> it is kind of dumb, but I do another, get it. Another concern is a lot of these mods for these kind of video, uh, these kind of online games. A lot of mods unlock the premium stuff. Yeah, um, and that's so that's, that's the bad, bad. That's part. bad, bad part. Because <laughs> those are money. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so you have to write an essay to Bethesda. It's that's really hilarious. funny. Oh, just that's so funny! I hope everyone can use. Somebody's going to. It's going to be one of those like old, like Still cheating the blank essay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, crap. Yes, I need this <laughs> in my life. It. <laughs> oh, that's that would be the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too good. Fo, did you uh, did you look up the stuff about how more evidence about the Nuvo reducing performance? There's no, like a video I didn't. on that. I didn't watch the video, so I, I don't really want to say anything about it. But the video is by Overlord. I don't like getting news from videos. I don't know why. I like reading. It's an Ars Technica article, so I have okay. a feeling that you sent it. Pretty sure. That's probably because, true. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I haven't had the time to read this one. So, uh, But this one's really dumb. So G2A, that gray market uh, Steam seller page marketplace thingy. Ah, okay. So uh, you guys have heard of G two A Pay, right? It's their like payment wallet kind of thing. Oh, okay. So if you sell a game, I think the money will go into your G two A Pay wallet thing. I'm not sure if you can take the money out or you can only use it in the marketplace. But uh, if you don't log in for 180 days, you will be charged. Every month, Whoa. one euro. Why? Okay, because I'm not a bank. So basically, <laughs> if I have ten euros in my G two A Pay wallet, they yeah. will charge me one euro for every month after one hundred eighty days I haven't logged in. And once yeah. the ten months has passed, I will lose all my ten euros, and that they won't take like anything from my credit card or anything. Dealing. But yeah, so G two A explained that. It is expensive to maintain user accounts. Are you fucking kidding me? 
Wow. It's not that expensive. No. Mm, they're just bits of information. A dollar a month a is still server. way too high for that. It's not a dollar. It's a euro. It's Sorry, a euro. It's like two dollars. It's like two dollars. Like it's one and a half. It, yeah. it depends on. It depends how bad we're doing. It depends on or how bad we're checking. It, <laughs> yeah, it depends exactly. on what Trump has said in public. Yeah, yes, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. One and yes. a half is usually what I say yeah. when I'm doing estimates. Okay. And it's. Oh my god. I just. Why do people still use this? What the fuck? Don't, What's wrong with yeah. them? And like literally nobody can. Um, they're based in Hong Kong. Good luck with that. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, it shouldn't be much of a problem because logging in for 180 days, but that doesn't make it okay. Mm-hmm. It's not okay at all. Oh well. <sighs> Sarah, you got anything? I have one last big one, but you might have that as well. Uh- <clears throat> I, I don't know. I don't. The problem is that I only have, I only have stuff from this week, not from last week. Um, the only interesting thing is I'm not sure if you guys knew about how China um has been having has been basically they set up a board for mm. games that can be released in China. <laughs> um, no, like a censorship. Yeah, thing, right? yeah. yeah I funny. mean, it's 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 both a censorship and very much like you know we're gonna review all the games and they're may interestingly enough it's not just like the violence or the sexuality they're worried about they're also really heavily worried about addiction stuff mm. like addictive quality oh, which yeah you they're know so them. yeah look at well look so looking in like the loot box kind of issues and stuff like that um but I guess uh so they they finally kind of recently like started getting games through um but I guess ten cent games um mm. owned by ten cent like were not at, at all approved, which is weird because Tencent is a Chinese-owned company. Um, the main thing about Tencent um, is I believe they own Riot Games. Oh. So <laughs> they also own, like, Call of yeah. Duty Online. Um, <laughs> any big game published in Only China is by Tencent. Only our games can have gambling. Yeah. So it's just very strange because in the past, like, Tencent was pretty close with the Chinese government and now all of a sudden you, none of their honestly, games are left. if you want to run a business as big as Tencent, you gotta have people in the government. Yeah, exactly. But, like, none of their games got corrupt, right? approved. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They... oh absolutely. Okay. <laughs> but, like, none of their games got approved. So now people are like, huh? <laughs> so, that's interesting. Um, as far as other news, uh, about what, do your thing. With Activision? Yeah, that's the big one. Go ahead. Yeah. Bungie, you split with Activision. Uh, I said Blizzard. God dang it. I, I was going to say Blizzard. <laughs> Bungie. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was thinking because Blizzard, Destiny. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. wrong. Oh, okay. So Bungie has split with Activision after eight years together. And Bungie will retain the rights for Destiny games. So yes, I guess that's big. I suppose. Well, I mean, honestly, good on Bungie. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, Nothing yeah. wrong with it. Somebody, so people out, so there are people who are like, oh, that's good news because Activision is a cancer, right? And then I people are like, I... but a lot of the decisions were made by Bungie and not by Activision. And yeah, I mean, it wasn't like to that counter is well, it's mostly because Activision pressured them to uh, whatever. I mean, whatever. I mean, to me, like, Activision, I'm sure, isn't great, but, like, I would be, <laughs> you know, forever cheering if Bioware got to separate from EA. <laughs> That's That would be yeah. a bigger celebration. Um, you, so, like, it's nothing... You don't have nothing... to worry about that because EA will just dissolve that. Dissolve. Yeah. yeah. Like how they did with Visceral. Yeah. But anyway, but, you know, yeah, I mean, I I guess how I see it is if they were able to separate, I'm hoping that means and they have a plan. You know, I didn't really play yeah. Bungie games, okay, so it's so not like I have a huge stake in it, but... The, the, the big news that came out in the middle of last year was they got a $100 million investment from a company called NetEase, which is a China company. Oh. So people are like, don't celebrate too fast. Hmm, yeah. Oh. Maybe not. Yeah. So it may or may just... not have implications, but... Okay, well, I guess we'll have to serve then. Let's see what happens. I mean, yeah, it's hard for me to be, like, have true feelings when we're there. I don't play Bungie games. <laughs> I didn't get into Halo, so... But I hope it's good news for them. guess so, we'll yeah. see. Hopefully they, you know, do better or whatever. Yeah. 
But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have such a stake on it. Yeah. Be Destiny. yeah, yeah, I agree. Although I have Destiny too, and Full has bought Destiny too as well. I did. <laughs> I guess sucker. Uh, yeah, I know. I was shocked when people bought Destiny too. I will admit, I was like, really. Because my brother bought, like, the collector's well, edition for Destiny 1, and he Destiny, regretted it. Destiny 1 was apparently good a year after release. And the same apparently goes for Destiny 2. So they forgot everything oh. they learned from Destiny 1 and repeated the problem and then fixed it. This was like, oh, okay. man. I should have just waited a year. Because apparently it's okay now. But I'm not going to get them more money. So I'm never going to find out. It's an MMO. Yeah. yeah. You got you to gotta keep spending money on it. Yeah. But I guess yeah, the, but uh, it should be the good. Is the, I should the get my money's worth. Yeah. You should. You should get your first $60 worth and then add on after that. But that's just my opinion. That's yeah, why it's really hard for me to get into MMOs. Fucking Destiny 2 was in the Humble Monthly Bundle like a few months ago. Oh, yeah. That's a great sign. So that means wow. it's like value. It's like $6 right now. Yeah. Yikes. Just the base game. Because it's one of those games where after the first few months, it starts making money on expansion packs. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, all right. I don't really have anything else that's really like. Yeah, besides, it's gonna get into super oh, I, long discussions. <laughs> I, I guess. For did you read the article that you sent? This I did read it. I read the whole thing. So what is it about? So is Randy Pitchford a pedophile? Randy what? Pitchford might be a pedophile. Although, so so. <laughs> oh come on. There, there's a case against him. Uh. About a thumb drive with kitty porn on it found in who, a who, like, medieval times or something. Yeah. Who is this guy? Wait, who is this? Uh, he's like the, the CEO, CEO of Gearbox. Gearbox. Famous for. Uh, the, oh, I just one. heard about this. Yeah, literally right, before a, I came he's upstairs. A, he's a huge toolbox. But well, so his story goes <laughs> uh, like first this. For Gearbox. His story oh, goes because he's big into magic. I mean, like, that's, 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 we've known he's big into magic for a long time, which is Not why magic yeah. gathering, probably right? like right. magic, magic tricks. tricks right? Yes, yeah. deception. Yeah. Um. Apparently, he's, he's also just into porn. Like he's so his story comes from a podcast. He's on a podcast that came out two days after this Kotaku article came out talking about the pedophilia <laughs> stuff. And so on the podcast, he's saying he was watching this uh, cam, girl, cam girl and I guess recording her or something, and she ejaculated. And he's like, "That's not how the female body works. This is a magic trick. This is amazing." So he recorded it and he put it on a thumb drive so Wait, he could sorry, take what, it home. That is what he said. Yes. What? Oh my God. So he could he could take it somewhere. I don't know where he was taking it, but he wanted to analyze it to see how the magic trick was performed. And uh, and and uh, wait, what's then the magic he, trick? Uh, oh, the, the woman ejaculated. <sighs> what? I don't know. I don't, don't know ask me. I don't <laughs> you didn't watch it, John. We gotta, I don't we, know. We gotta get ready to for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, yeah, and so then like that's that's, that's been the whole story. But it's like, and then he left the thumb drive at like a basically a restaurant near near one of their headquarters, and some kid found it and took it home. And the thumb drive also had like a bunch of I guess like Gearbox data on it, like of games and stuff. Mm. So they, I mean, that's what he said. I don't know. And so they got it back, and then <laughs> and then Randy Pitcher was, was on vacation. And the whole office looked at the thumb drive, and they focused on the one thing that was on the thumb drive. <laughs> but like, who knows? Like, it's probably full of porn. Like, I don't know. I don't trust. Well, yeah, no. There's no way it was only one. You don't just <laughs> when you put you porn just on one. your thumb drive. You don't stop <laughs> at one. Who <laughs> Listen. also puts porn on a thumb drive? Like, what the? Too many frack? people. Too many people. No, I used to work. I used to work in like a. It wasn't tech support, but it was basically a tech like support thing position. Okay. Um, in college, and yeah. my super supervisor told me she's like she told me stories about how she would just find these random thumb drives and how she like is very careful now because these are professors thumb drives or even students thumb drives and she'll put them <laughs> in figure out who it is and there's full of porn so oh, yeah so it's just a don't thing. plug in random thumb drives that's how you get hacked yeah that too that's how you get viruses yeah oh my god well that's great so that's that case will, that'll, we'll learn more as that case progresses yeah i'm sure because uh, i think sued or something right He's getting so it's almost like a mutual assured destruction kind of thing going on. So yeah. Randy Pitchford's like suing this guy, and this guy is suing Randy Pitchford back. So the guy suing Randy Pitchford back is the one like alleging child porn stuff as well, and Randy Pitchford's suing the other guy for essentially like embezzling from Gearbox. I think, and I think that I think they're both being sued for embezzling. It's a little hard to follow. 
Because like Jeez. part of the part of the thing is also allegedly that Randy Pitchford used Gearbox funds to throw parties at his house where adult strippers exposed themselves to underage people for Randy's amusement. Oh my god, this you guy's gross. Money and stuff, right? Yeah, siphoned money. Honestly, for those parties, I'm not surprised he's this weird. Yeah, I'm not super surprised. Not super surprised. Yeah. I'm still just. I'm sad. surprised he didn't take better precaution to not get this kind of shit out. I didn't think he was this dumb, right? <laughs> God, yeah, I guess so. Just, I guess I don't know. Mm, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe sad, maybe it's savvy, a good thing he's dumb, so we could find him way. and lock it's him up. So you know what? Like maybe it's good he's dumb. The bad people are dumb. You yeah, know, people I talk like about bad the crimes dumb. they commit on Facebook, kind of thing. Oh my gosh! But yeah, that. Oh my goodness, those are the best. Pretty funny. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, well, that was a downer. So I need to oh, really need to know how the female ejaculation is a magic trick. <laughs> yeah, a trick. I know. I I'm confused as to what he means by that statement. <laughs> what? I want to know more, but I also don't want to talk or read any more about I... it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. Like what? <sighs> All right. Just gonna leave it alone. That's a pretty good way to end. <laughs> <laughs> We so my so we're watching. Um, uh, uh, we don't top have anything gear. to top that now. Okay, I'm watching yeah. the new Top Gear, and like every right. episode ends in like some bad news. It's like, well, and on that note of sudden disappointment, like, goodbye, and just ends the episode <laughs> like on some just horrible note. Every single one. <laughs> Is it related to Paris at all? Yes. Oh, okay. All right, I I think I'm done. <laughs> yep. I gotta drown my sorrows. Just. Purge. Yeah, Just whack myself think... in the head. Forget. Yeah, I think uh, I think I need some something something, something to something. take my mind off of <laughs> that <laughs> one. Mm. All right. Look what I got for Christmas. A yeah. Big old thing of peanut M and M's. Start eating that. <laughs> Thank it. A friend of mine gave me a stuffed capybara for Christmas. What's this, that? It's not real. Oh, it's not it's, real. It's a capybara. Okay. Oh. Oh, capybara. I, 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 I thought you gave it a name like it's from an anime. That's pretty cool. Yeah, though. it's a capybara. It's because I I recently said that like capybaras were my patronus, and so they're pretty um, awesome. They are pretty awesome. They they will mother anything. They just yeah. are, can be mothers to any animal. So it seemed very fitting for me. Anyway, <laughs> so that's what I. That's one of the things I got for Christmas. I don't think anything else I got for Christmas is up here. So oh no, sorry, my room's falling apart. <laughs> okay. This one got the new house. Yes, that's why I got the new house. <laughs> exactly. Destroy this one on the way out. <laughs> yeah. So let's end. First. Do the thing. Yeah. End it. End. Hey guys, end. this is this is Saroscopic S A R E H S C O P I C. I will be on YouTube someday. Uh, my New Year's resolution is <laughs> to do more of that once I get the new house going in the new studio. Um, I am on Facebook. I am on Twitter. You can see me there. I also am now the at the news desk for Checkpoint XP. Um, so go check out CheckpointXP.com and check them out on Twitch. You could see me on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and sometimes Fridays like I was today. Kind of depends on what they want me to do. But I am part of their team now, so it's pretty cool. Oh, wait. Yeah. When you say news desk, you, you do like I reporting. Read, you read I it. report the news. news. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, kind of. Cool. Yeah. Basically, I say the news item, and they all talk about it, and I say the next thing, and yeah, it's cool stuff. Nice. Oh. I'm Fohamner, and I'm on YouTube. I'm I'm having, like, an identity crisis on my channel right now, where I feel like I need to get back to my roots and play more indie games, but I'm having a hard mm -hmm. time picking them out, so I'm still playing yeah, Battle Chasers. Enough. I don't know what's coming you up should, after that. You should play the one I shared earlier. I, uh, yeah, I mean, it's tempting. You should also play Grizz. What's that? The depression one, remember? Oh, oh yeah, no. I haven't seen no, it. This one looks Everybody's depressing enough too. <laughs> anyway, what about you? I am. <laughs> Poo -poo -poo. I am. Um, oh, I am. On Twitter, YouTube, those kind of stuff. So yes, this has been episode one hundred forty-six of the Podcast. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Boy! <laughs> <laughs>